Welcome to Gemara Academy. In this class, we will learn Taisus de Baramaskal, Lema Tehevet Yufta de Rava. Let's begin by looking at the flowchart of the Gemara so you can see what Taisus is coming to explain. So, here in the Gemara, we said that it seems that the Brisa creates a question on Rava. The Brisa said that if somebody took an item from Rosh Hashanah to Rosh Hashanah and he was standing on the doorstep, which is a Mokim Ptor, took it from the Rosh Hashanah to the Rosh Hashanah, although it's usher to do it, if he did do it, he is Potter. Whereas Rava said that if somebody carried an item from one point in Rosh Hashanah to a distance of four Amas away and he took it through a Mokim Ptor, he's Chayev. And both cases seem to be the same. A person did it something which is usher on Shabbos, either he carried from the Rosh Hashanah to the Rosh Hashanah, or he carried four Amas in Rosh Hashanah, and in both cases it went through a Mokim Ptor, and the Brisa says the person is Potter, and Rava says the person is Chayev. So this is the part of the Gemara that Tesis is coming to talk about and explain, and let's see the general outline of Tesis. So the Gemara asks that it seems that the teaching in the Brisa, that if the person on the doorstep passed an item from one from a person in one Rishas to a person in the other Rishas, they are all three putter, contradicts the teaching of Rava. That's what it seems like. So Tesis over here will, number one, Tesis will present how Rashi understands the teaching of Rava and ask two questions on him. What is this case of Rava? We explained it up to now based on Rashi's explanation that the person carried four Amas and Rishas Rabin, and he carried it above himself, so that way it was in a Mokim Ptor. So Tesis is going to present this understanding of, Ra- of Rashi, and he's going to present two questions on Rashi. And number two, Tesis will present and agree with the explanation of Rabbeinu Hanano. So let's see Tesis now in the flowchart form. So we begin what it says in the Gemara. The Gemara asks that it seems that the teaching in the Brisa, that if the person on the doorstep passed an item from a person in one Rishas to a person in the other Rishas, there are all three Pater, it seems that this contradicts the teaching of Rava. So it says Tesis, and it's in a purple arrow pointing upwards, because it's the explanation of Rashi to what the case of Rava is referring to. The teaching of Rava is that a person is chayev when a person carried something for Amazon on Rosh Hashanah above ten Tfachim, which is a Makim Ptor. So that's the way we compared it, like we said initially, that he carried, he did something which is Asr, carried four Amas on Rosh Hashanah but he did it through a Makim Ptor. So Tesis poses on this two questions. It's really three questions, but it's divided into two distinct types of questions, like we'll see now. So Tesis asks, this doesn't seem correct, why not? Number one, if so, he should have asked from the Rabbanon who said that one who carries from a store to the plaza through the bench area is Chayev. The question shouldn't be on Ravo. We should have said that the Brisa poses a, a contradiction to the Rabbanon, which then it wouldn't be a question because the Rabbanon and the Chacham could argue with the Brisa, but that should be what the Gemara pointed out. It seems that the teaching in our Brisa not poses a difficulty on Ravo, who is an Amaira, but rather it contradicts another teaching in a, from an equal authority, which is the Rabbanon, who taught, we learned this earlier, that if somebody carries an item, mechanus le platia, derech stav, from Rosh Hashanah the chanus, the store, to the platia, the plaza, which is Rosh Hashanah by way of the bench area, which is a Carmelis, the Rabbanon say that he's chayef. So we see he went from, he did it, a carrying of an iser, but he went through an area that's a p'tur area, minatera. Still the Rabbanon say chayef. And here it says that when he went through the doorstep, he is potter. So we shouldn't have posed the question on Ravah, we should have brought it up on the Rabbanon. And number two, he says, and it's connected to this, also, what's the question on Ravah? We're saying that it's a difficulty on Ravah, who's an Amira who's arguing with a Brisa, which is by Atana. Also, what's the question on Ravah? We can say the Rabbanon agree with him. Ravah is fitting with the Rabbanon. So Thesis is saying two things. Number one, it's more appropriate to bring down the Rabbanon, who are the equal place of and level of, of, of authority as the Brisa. And number two, now that we have the Rabbanon over here that don't seem to fit with the Brisa, then what's the question on Rava? Rava fits with the Rabbanon. So that's the difficulty with the way Rashi learns what the case of Rava is. So it wouldn't fit into the Gemara to be asking a question on Rava. It should have been posed in the Rabbanon. And number two, Rava could simply answer he fits with the Rabbanon. And the second part, question of Tesis, so there's two questions there, but they revolve around the same point. That according to Rashi, it comes out that that case is very similar to the Rabbanon, and therefore the question should be on the Rabbanon, and also therefore it's not a question on Rava since he fits with the Rabbanon. And furthermore, says Tesvis, it's another question, it says in a mission in Erevin, a person may stand in Rosh Hashanah and carry in Rosh Hashanah as long as he doesn't carry outside of four Hamas. That means a person is permitted to be standing in the Rosh Hashanah and carry an item which is in the Rosh Hashanah He can move it from one place in the Rosh Hashanah to another as long as it doesn't go outside of four Hamas. So even though he's in Rosh Hashanah it's picking up an item in Rosh Hashanah Maybe it's like carrying it into the Rosh Hashanah It's permitted if he moves it less than four Hamas in the Rosh Hashanah and it says over there, the Gemara points out, that this indicates that if he carried it 
Further, he would be chayiv a chatas. If he carried more than four amas in the Rosh Hashanah, he would be chayiv a karvan chatas. So it supports Rava, etc. It says it supports Rava. Now, the question is, and according to Rashi, how are these two teachings related? How does the teaching that if a person carries more than four amas, he's going to be chayiv a karvan chatas, and he carries less than four amas, he won't. How does that connect to the teaching of Rava, who talks about when it went through a makim p'tur? There's no connection between the two of them. So we see that the teaching of Rava, the Gemara in Erevin, indicates is related to this case when a person carries less than four Amis or Shasarabim, where he's Pater, and more than four Amis, where he's Chayev. Now, how do those two t- cases relate and connect according to Rashi? In Rava's case, the way Rashi understands it, it went higher than Tent Facham. It went into an area of Ptur. In the case that brought down an Erevin, the person's in a Rosh Hashayachet. How do those two cases connect? And therefore, Taisu says, Lakach Nira, therefore, it seems like the explanation of Rabbeinu Hanano, the way he learns Hamai Rechevitz. The, uh, a person who carries an item from the beginning of four arms to the end of four arms from Rishus Rabbim. Even though he passed it, Derech Olav, he's Chayev. The way Tesis understands it is based on what Rabbi Nuchanan says, which is it's when a person carried four arms from Rishus Rabbim and passed it in front of himself. What he did was he carried it four arms from Rishus Rabbim and it went in front of himself. He's Chayev, and now we we'll see how it fits with the Gemara and Erevin. It's the exact same case. That if he carried it four amas, he'd be chayiv. We also see how it's not connected to the Rabbanan whatsoever. The Rabbanan are talking about when it went through an area of Ptur. Here it didn't go through an area of Ptur. So then what's the connection between the Brisa challenging Rava, though? That's what we need to explain. So Taisus explains it. We thought that since he passed it in front of himself, it's like it's resting. We thought at this point that when he passed it in front of itself, in front of himself, at that point when it's exactly across from his body, it's considered to be at rest. And so he didn't carry four amas at once. So Rava says that when it came to rest over here, that's how we understood it. And then he continued, he's going to be Chayev. And the Brisa says that when it went through the Iskufa, since it came to rest, he's going to be Pater, because it separates one act from Rosh Hashayachet to the Mokim Ptur, and one act from the Mokim Ptur to the Rosh Hashayachet. So the Brisa says it becomes separated over there. And in Rava's case, he doesn't say it becomes separated. The person carried it, now it came to rest. And then he continued out and he put it down. We should separate it into two Amis and two Amis, which does not cons- consist of a chiyuv. And the Gemara says, and he answers that there it didn't come to rest. In the Brisa by the Skufa, when the person brought it into the doorstep, it's considered to come to rest. However, when a person is in the Rosh Hashayach, and he carries an item along the Rosh Hashayach for Amas, when it comes across from himself, it doesn't come to rest. So with that we have the whole Tesis. And just to summarize, Tesis presents how Rashi understands the teaching of Rava. He points out three questions, which we divided into two sets. The first one is that if that's the case, it's nothing to do with Rava. It's actually we have a precedent by the Rabbonon. Number two, since we have a precedent by the Rabbonon, not only should the question have been posed on the Rabbonon, but it's no longer a question and a challenge to Rava. He simply could fit with the Rabbonon. And number two, said Taisvis, the Gemara in Erevin points out that the case of Rava is like when a person carries more than four armors in Rosh Hashanah when he's standing in a Rosh Hashanah. According to Rashi, how is that like the case of Rava? Therefore, Taisvis says that the case of Rava is when a person carries four Amas and Rosh Hashanah while he's in the Rosh Hashanah, and the reason we thought that the Brisa creates a difficulty on this teaching of Rava is because we understood it that when it passes in front of him, it comes to rest. Just like in the Brisa, it came to rest. Now, in the Brisa, when it came to rest in the Mokim Torah, he's Pater. And in Rava's case, when it came to rest in the at the end of two Amas, because it's four Amas total, so let's say two Amas is in the middle, He's going to still be chayev. We don't divide it into two. And with this we could understand, it has nothing to do with the Rabbanon. The Rabbanon is when he walked through, he never came to rest. However, here in the case of Rava, when it came across from himself, we're saying that at this point we understood that it did come to rest, and therefore it's a question on Rava. And the Gemara answers that that's not the case. When the item passes in front of a person, and it's directly across and opposite from him, it's not considered at rest. Whereas in the Brisa, it actually came to rest when the person brought it into the Mokim Torah, the Rishos where his body is, the item is now considered to be at rest.